I have no idea. I don't know. Also, I should put up the Rebel logo in the corner. There. Now we're professional. Uh, hello! Welcome to the Rebel Season 9 uh, pre-cap recap for Div v Division Rel 9 and Rel 10A. We have, do... we have officially gradu graduated to a returning division. <laughs> I do not envy you for that mouthful of words. Hello, everybody. I am SB Dwiggy, or Dwigs. And I'm Kiss Blue, and together we are both members of Team Powell. Because that's sort of that that's 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 sort of what happens here. Uh, <laughs> you're more important when you're part of Clan Fowl. That's just how it is. It is statistically proven. Other Fowl alumni include Gengar and Nose Dice and Superfed, all current or former sports reporters. Yeah. So, All right. so yeah. Uh, here's the plan for today. We are going to look at every team in those two divisions we're covering, and we are not going to look at the schedules for this week only because this is the precap. Ideally, I would have done this, like in the perfect world, I would have waited for everyone to join this division and then done this right before the first game was played. But obviously, that's impossible. So. We're just going to not look at the schedules until next week. Uh, but what we are going to do is make baseless predictions about playoffs. Um, yep. Having said that... Prepare to be judged. Yeah. And uh, let's start the judging off with uh, the Charlestown Chiefs, coached by Steer. They are a Lizardman team in REL 9. Putting of the foil I don't know what that means well I mean that is it a pun I don't know putting up the foil Charles sound chefs chiefs I'm assuming this is something I'm assuming he's from South Carolina because that's where Charlestown is and maybe he's a Kansas City Chiefs fan I don't know hmm well neither do I yeah no but... don't don't worry don't worry about it <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this team. Uh, first thing I noticed is we got four rerolls on a lizard team, and I actually don't mm -hmm. hate that. A lot of people say that's too much. Uh, if you can afford it early, it's good. Maybe take it down to three once you know all your stores get blocked and whatnot. But uh, okay, yeah, I think a developed lizard team definitely should not have four rerolls. Uh, you're right. There's an argument for having it with a relatively fresh lizard team and. Everyone in this division should be one season old. So yeah. this is a relatively fresh Lizardman team. I'm not a big fan of it because I prefer to play min-maxing with my TV and firing and hiring skinks. Uh, but, you know, the way I do it isn't the only way. Like, there's, it's not, a, I, neither is objectively wrong or right. Exactly. And sometimes mm -hmm. those one and nines just come every turn. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Having said that, in this case, uh, there are... I um, I thought there was no Crocs, but it's just hiding. It's underneath the Saurus. Yeah, <laughs> Reggie Dunlop is down there mm -hmm. uh, cool. trying to duck under yeah. cover. Guard and break tackle, which is a decent combo on a, on a Saurus. No, yeah. Or on a Crocs, rather. It's not bad on a Saurus either, but... Uh, Definitely looking for that elusive uh, Bloxagore. Yeah, that's hard to get mm -hmm. though sometimes. Um, I am, I'm a fan of the guard stand firm uh, approach with the Crocs, but guard break tackle is also good if you mm -hmm. really want to put that tail on somebody. I mean, it's another case where both are valid. Like The, the Crocs is, has so much movement that break tackle is actually pretty good on it. But, it yeah. def but being able to stand firm with... Uh, with Prince Hotel is definitely very good. I I think I I think if you have block, then stand firm is definitely the right way to go. But without block, they're about as good as each other. Yeah, they're both they're both good picks. Mm -hmm. um, I do I do like having at least one break tackle on a lizard team, uh, mainly because mm -hmm. you never skinks can't really do the job by themselves, and sometimes you just need to get one of those source free. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, uh, I would, I'd rather see it on a Saurus, and I'm sure he'll probably get one eventually. Uh, but you know, having mm -hmm. it on a Crocs works too. Speaking you just of, have to hope you don't mm -hmm. bonehead. Speaking of that, uh, of the Saurus, four of them have block, one of which has mighty blow, and two of which have guard. Which uh, uh, I like mm -hmm. very much. I think taking block first on Saurus is huge. Is I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with it. It's it's the safest one you can take. There are some yep. fringe cases where you might want to take a different skill, but it's never wrong to take block for your first skill on a Saurus. Yeah. And then uh, the only mm -hmm. other things I would want to see on some of these Saurus maybe is like a little bit of tackle because there's no tackle on the team. Uh, break tackle on one at least. And then uh, a frenzy guy because mm -hmm. everybody loves a frenzy guy. I'm more ambivalent towards the Frenzy Saurus, but I do agree one of these Saurus should take uh, Break Tackle, and one of them should take Regular Tackle. Yep. Uh, just for coverage. And once you have that, you can basically just specialize them however you want, really. Pretty much. It's got an <laughs> Agi 4 Skink as well. Dave Killer Carlson. Uh, yeah, oh. this is a sidestep Agi 4 Jump Up Skink, which is... Seems like an odd combo to me, and it's almost leveled up again, but I mean, it's plus agility, so you're going to keep it. Yep. I I feel like jump up, like, I don't actually hate jump up on a skink, but I feel like it's a very strange choice on a plus agility skink. Well, if he gets knocked down because he doesn't have block, yeah, he could just get up and pick up the ball again and run away with it. But that could use be, all of his eight movement. But that could be sprint or catch or... Probably, probably not diving tackle, but <laughs> well, with jump up, diving tackle works very well with that. Yeah, but it doesn't. It's not a good use of your agi four. Maybe your cage diving to mark with diving tackle. I don't know. It, and in either case, <laughs> I feel like diving tackle would be the choice before jump up. Yeah, I agree. But he's also mm -hmm. got a movement nine skink with sidestep, so that is a one turner in the making. Yeah, he's only one STP to level as well. Yeah, the only shame so. is that it has a niggle. Uh, I might... I'm going to need to keep track of this team for when I'm making my fantasy league, because I think one of these things is going to end up on it. <laughs> there you go. And then he's got enough skinks that the niggle skink can uh, sit on the bench until he's ready for his one turn on uh, defense, so that's nice too. Uh, while that's true, I feel like this is this is a... I feel like this skink is not so good that you want to keep it on the bench. I think it's more useful if you're if you're putting it out regularly. Because yeah. it, is, it is an easy one turn. You only need two pushes right now. But mm -hmm. also, like, think about it this way. If you're on... I probably would bench it on defense. Uh, That's what I'm but, saying. Yeah. But on, but on offense, like, on a turn one offense, this guy means you need to get... You don't really need to move down the field at all in order to be a scoring threat you can cage yeah, yeah. on w with this skink you can change you can cage literally on the line of scrimmage and you are in scoring range pretty much yeah and gutter runners can do that all the time which is why they're bullshit um, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah though i like the way this team looks uh yeah also has a magic dome, so you know it doesn't need to worry about weather. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this team develops as the season progresses. Uh, let's yeah. just look at the history because I'm not familiar with it. Uh, history, stats, I mean. last season. How did they do last season? That's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know about their season score, but their statistics are 14, 5, and 7 overall. Uh, oh, you know what? They were a playoff team. No, they weren't. I think they did Open Invitational and uh, Greenhorn the year before. They, so I'm, They have two games in their records. That is round of 16 and round of 32. Interesting. Oh, oh no, I know what it is. This is, this is a team from Miners. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, where they did quite well. I mean, they were in playoffs for Miners. So, you know... There you go. There you go. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how they perform. Yeah, I think they will be an interesting team to watch. Uh, moving on, our next team is the Color Plaid's Durin's Dastardly Dudes, which is a dwarf team here for a long time. Not a good time. 
I guess that, that that sounds like a good dwarf motto because <laughs> they survive and everybody hates them. So <laughs> there's no good times to be had when you're playing dwarves. But uh, okay, no comment. Let's take a... <laughs> so this is another coach that went with the four rerolls. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So this makes this makes more sense to me now because I believe this one is also a miners coach. So I could see mm -hmm. why miners coaches would want to take. Uh, for rerolls, uh, it is risk. indeed a minor coach. So, uh, but he has uh, five or four already leveled up long mm -hmm. beards with all with guard. Uh, I would like to see since you don't have one yet, uh, just somebody with mighty blow. Uh, you probably had some at some point and they just died and you had to replace them. Um, um so. well, you know, one long beard is one as to be away. Uh, both of the or well, one of the one of the runners is one SP away from leveling as well, and one of the blitzers is one SP he from leveling away. You know what? I want to see this team do at least two vanity passes in their first game because there are two very easy level ups here, and uh, they can they can probably pull it off. Yeah, um, unless you roll like me and you roll ones and twos every time you try to do something like that. Oh, uh, that never that never happens. It, <laughs> Um, I do like, I do like the fourth rule less than dwarves than lizards. I feel like dwarves don't really need it. This, sort yeah. of the whole point of dwarves is that you're super reliable. Yeah, <laughs> and throwing a one die, failing a one die block with a dwarf isn't really that bad because mm -hmm. you're eighty nine with thick skull. It's, you are the, it's the, probably the most protected, it, uh, police other than maybe a tree man. If you're making uh, a one die and you're playing correctly, it is either because you are desperate or because it doesn't matter if you if you end up on the floor. Yep. Uh, but yeah, like this, there isn't much development here. But what is here is solid. There, I would like to see the reroll burned, and I, I would like it if the runner that had tackle here, because, okay, I think tackle is actually a good skill to take on a dwarf runner. But I think you should. I think it's a lot better if you take. Russell. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, if you're mm -hmm. using him as a, a long distance sacker, seeing as he's mm -hmm. got a whole two extra movement, you'd want Russell because most likely the person you're trying to take down has uh, mm -hmm. block dodge. Um, but and like, I don't hate I don't hate the block either. Now you have a backup, you know, primary ball handler. I if mean, Federico goes down. Here's the problem with that though. Like, it's fine to. W to want two runners and for them both to be good ball carriers, but a good ball carrier is not a good sacker. That is true. You can't really do both effectively. Yeah, so... And now you have no... Uh, well, I mean, you can still get wrestle on him. It's just... I mean, again, like, taking tackle on... I also think it's too early for tackle, actually. Uh, but that is... that That is something that I will get contention from. I am of the opinion dwarves do not need tackle early because that's what the long beards are for. Uh, but you know, depending on the division, you do want it. Uh, yeah. Other and than that, uh, there's no stadium upgrade, and there is three thirty three hundred k in the bank. So either this team is going to buy a stadium enhancement, or they are going to buy a death roller. Mmm, death rollers. Those are always fun. It's going to be one or the other, and I don't know which one. Uh, I'm a fa I am a fan of both uh, in different situations. It really depends what the color plaid wants to do with their team. Uh, yeah. All right. They do definitely need to spend that money before they play their game, though, because they are yeah. giving away a lot of extra team value just sitting in their bank. That is true. Uh, moving on. We have negative pro with Mystery Science Ghost 3000. This hey, I this, remember this team. Yeah, this team should be familiar. Um, the first of several familiar faces uh, tonight. All right. I know he played in the Devastational, mm -hmm. so let's see uh, what happened there. Okay. Well, all of his Chaos Warriors have blocked now. One of them has Blodge. Uh, one of his goats took a armor bust and one of them is that a niggle no it's just a mistake 
Okay, good. Yeah, I'd say he got through it pretty well. Uh, he has seven block players right now, which is pretty good. He has a... Uh, couple has eight... niggled players. Well, yeah, he has a couple niggled players, which isn't the best. But I think he had those before. He had at least one of them before. Like, Smash La Jaw, that was niggled in last season, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember. Hmm. But let's take a look. So one thing I'm curious about with the two heads as the first level up on a couple dudes. Um, that does seem odd. But I'm not sure what he's trying to build those guys into. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, like I said, I don't think that in, there's people should have to follow a cookie cutter mm -hmm. build. It's uh, I just I don't know what you're trying to do with those. Um but it does give him somebody that if he's desperate and needs to get through a line at the end of a half, you know, somebody who's better at running with the ball mm -hmm. uh, through a screen. Um, I would go ahead and probably sack roll fizzle beef. He's only got one SPP. You've got, uh, uh, well, yeah. maybe wait a game, maybe wait a game so that you, uh, I can mean, he, it. he has 13 goats. So depending who he's playing next, he doesn't even need goat number 13. That's like, true, but he does uh, have one does have one missed next game so well, if he does yeah, want to bench true. um other than that uh i don't hate uh sure hands and then uh big hand uh both of those together work very well mm -hmm. or extra arms i mean mm -hmm. um maybe next uh we just hope you roll doubles on that guy and he gets a dodge um, yeah i think it's hope for doubles in the ball carrier and i think the one thing negative pro's team is really missing is that he really he needs to start developing a killer i think yeah uh, the, killer's typically the first thing mm -hmm. i start doing so i'll give block to a lot of dudes and then the first one that gets uh the second level mm -hmm. gets mighty blow right yeah, off like, the bat i feel like he has the players he needs for answering or he has the players he needs to have a, a more reliable team he has a few of things he needs to answer specific plays like tackle and kick and uh and sure hands but he doesn't have anything that kills things. Yeah. So yeah, you'd want because chaos is a uh, a bash team. Mm -hmm. They're not really that great at control. I feel like. Well, so you can definitely. They can be. They you can. can be. You can definitely do control, but in that case, you still you still need different skills from what's here. Yeah, you would need a lot more guard than you have mm -hmm. right now, um, which is done. So those are the two things that I would say this team probably needs more of is. Uh, you know, mighty blow mm -hmm. and claw on a play on a blitzer, and uh, start no. getting guard on mm -hmm. the warriors and maybe a few goats. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but I think once he does start getting uh, guard and mighty blow, uh, his TV development I think will shoot right up because I know that was a like I was like I'm actually surprised that his team was so developed because I know he was struggling with it a bit last season, yeah. so he must have really done work in the devastational. Uh, and he has Neville's Altar. So, there you go. what does Chaos induce with Neville's Altar? Uh, who's the one guy? Uh, uh Max Spleen Ripper's 80k with the Altar. Okay. Um, who's the, who's the one, uh, with the flaming helmet, the Chaos Warrior dude? How much does he cost? Uh, the flaming... Helmet. Orac um, the Destroyer or something like that? I, I'm not I'm not sure. It's over two th it's over two hundred. Gotcha. Right. I'm pretty sure the cheapest star player for Chaos is Max Spleen Ripper, and he's still fairly he is he is the worst chainsaw because he's the most he is one of the most expensive and with no supporting skills. He has four strength, but you can't use it as a as a chainsaw player. Like yeah. he, he's a chaos war he's a rookie chaos warrior with a chainsaw. Which I'll admit is a is a nice image, but is not very effective. Yeah. Uh, still, I cannot say that I, I like seeing the Neville Altar. I just don't know what it does for chaos. I'm not sure either, but uh, I did see, uh, looking at his mm -hmm. uh, last devastational game, and he ended up going up against Stubings. And it oh, did you know not what? Actually, like it went well for him. It might have it might have been for the devastational. Uh, now that you mention it, because I don't think he had that last season, and 
I think he's a, about middle of the pack in team, TV in this division, but he was probably, in the Devastational, he was probably playing people who had better, higher TV than him. Yeah, I think like, he was significantly around 1,200. Yeah, yeah, he was around 1,200 when we, when we left, mm -hmm. so. So I could see that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up, uh, the CR Boys Giant Stags, coached by CR Boys, Misfits. Misfits. And I know when I look at this team the other day, they needed five loners, I think, and looks like they've already played their game for the week. Um, in fact, I actually mm -hmm. know they've already played their game for the week because he told me. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, I think he's in chat as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah. There he is. Uh... And... But no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. I might have masked over it quickly when I was looking at statistics. <laughs> You know, let's just ignore it. Um, so, there is a movement three tree here. A block movement three tree. That's awesome. That's an awesome tree. Uh, uh, okay, so, we're going to look at the rest of the team in a minute, but no joke here, this tree needs to take piling on. <laughs> that would be epic. Uh, there's actually a good reason for that. <laughs> um, get up every turn. <laughs> Yeah, he can get up every turn, but also it gives you a way to knock yourself down if you get, take root. Uh, but you can't follow up when you take root to do a piling on, can you? So you would need grab first. Hmm, that's a good point. I mean, you could pile on on a, uh, on a both down, but maybe grab first would would be better. Although less cool. <laughs> Maybe start with piling on, then get grab if you have issues. <laughs> Take both grab and piling on in whichever order you prefer. <laughs> uh, you're actually pretty close to getting the next level up on the tree, even. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, looking at the... Going down the list. Uh, that, there I, are, I'm going to have to keep this tree in mind for out the mm -hmm. season. There are uh, two Agi5 players on this team. One of which is which a... Is catcher who also has plus movement this is a one turn threat uh on its next level up if it doesn't roll movement take sidestep then it's a one push for a one turn yep uh it is niggled though so this elf ha this elf is a huge target oh, i mean he was gonna be a huge target anyway it's an even bigger niggle. target <laughs> Uh, and there's a plus strength uh, line elf as well. This team is disgusting. Uh, at least one of the war dancers is regular. Uh, both of the war dancers are regular. It's only strip strip ball is a regular, is a very normal uh, first level up on a war dancer. That is true, but you typically don't see war dancers this low developed with all this other awesome stuff. So it I... makes. Which, they're normally disgusting by nature, war dancers. Like I just feel out of the box. like, uh, okay. It's so, relatively, they're less disgusting. The the one that, ha the level one it has played three matches. And the level two has played five matches. Uh, I, I feel pretty sure, and neither of them have e inflicted any injury. No, that's not true. One of them has inflicted a single casualty. But both of them combined have inflicted a single casualty. So, so yeah. I feel co they're both relatively new and they haven't hurt anything really. And I bet you that all of the, the most of the touchdowns have probably been fed to other players on this team, look, taking a yeah. look at it. Yeah. Well, oh. wait, I, I just realized oh. one of these dudes is. Crazy Boys just said six. they died from leap. <laughs> oh. So I looked into one of the dudes and then came back. His uh, level that he oh shit yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ! An Agi six lineman. Oh, you give that guy block and sure hands. I think to uh, take balls out of tackle zones after it's strip balled. I would give him. Uh, honestly, I might turn him into a sacker. But what you said is also good. No matter what you what you do with him, it's going to be good. Yeah, and you got what, you got natural what, sackers and the war dancers. Use what, him as a ball retrieval. I think. What the hell? <laughs> what 
the this, hell? This team is unnatural. Okay. 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 No stadium enhancement, three rerolls. It's from Ariel. It was 9E, I think. They played yeah, in last 9E. Season. Wow. Okay. Uh, also, it has a coach assistant and a cheerleader. Uh, I don't think this team meets either of those. You save your. You're, you're, this team is so bloaty, save yourself the 20k. Yeah. Give away as little inducements as possible mm. with this team. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, another familiar face, the Fat Earthers. Everyone's Who favorite still underdog. don't have a team not motto. Come on, get it together, the real Denison. Get it together. <laughs> okay, uh, so, the Devastational was kind to this team. I think they only played... No, they played They played three games in the Devastational. They got to play Rusty Seabus, or Sea Butter. Uh, and I'm not sure who the other two coaches are. Um, uh, they won one of them, though. They beat uh, mm -hmm. a dwarf team in the Devastational, which is always awesome. Well, right now, they have a plus Agi Ogre uh, with Break Tackle, which, you know, is still useful. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have two Block Ogres, and which is great. they have a plus Movement Ogre. These are scoring threats. Mm-hmm. Well, you use, you, I think you the use... Agi Ogre is actually the score. Well, the Agi Ogre well, carries the ball. Then yeah. if you have to, you try and hand off to the Movement Ogre. Yeah, Fat Earth Truther, mm -hmm. he's the quarterback now, obviously. So he and will. He, and he also has a break tackle. And uh, so the other thing is, too, with uh, him being at G3, he's going to throw Noblars better as well, right? Uh, is that how that works? That's not how that works. No, it's not how that works? Okay. No. Uh, throw teammate is always a 2 plus on a. What is the one below short throw? Quick pass? Yeah, it is always a 2 plus on a quick pass and always a 3 plus on a short throw. If you take long arms, then it's always a, a quick pass and therefore a 2 plus. Uh, the landing, however, is where it gets you because the landing is the same as leap, only also affected by tackle zones. Gotcha. All right. Uh, plus also you need to, you know, like, pick up the ball. Well, no, that's not ogres. That's trolls. <coughs> um, okay. Yeah, this team looks a lot better than the last time I saw it. And yeah. I I know the real Denzel was having trouble last season, but I'm glad he kept the team. I think the team looks a lot better. I think he will do better this season. If only, yeah. if only incrementally. You're still playing ogres. And I know he uh, he dropped all of his Noblars at the end of last season because he had a bye week for his last mm -hmm. game. So that helped him out. And then I think he's just now starting to bring them back up. Because when I looked at this team before we recorded and before he played his game, he had zero still. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think he's just going to try and stay and hover around mm -hmm. 130, 140. So if, a, if an ogre dies, mm -hmm. he can instantly replace it. And then if he goes over... Just mm -hmm. fill that up with Noblars. That would make sense. Uh, and he also... He does not have a level 2 stadium either. I think he should have a level 2 stadium. Because you're ogres. Like, I'm, although, having said that, I'm not sure what you take. Like, I guess... No, I am sure. You can hire Nobla, uh, I think. But I know for sure you can hi hire Dribble Snot. So, Neville's yeah. Altar is good on an ogre team. Dribble Snot's awesome. Yeah. If and if he's not, he'll. It's just fun to watch him fail for you. Mm -hmm. Plus, or also, Madden. the TV on this team is is low enough that you're not really giving away too much to your opponent by having a Nephilim Alter. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Next up, we have uh, mammals of unusual size. Un Enough. or Unazu. I bet I didn't catch that at all last season. That no, that you was, did. Okay. <laughs> un Unazu. Un we talked about that. Before. What s spell check? And I think mammals is spelled wrong as well. But... It is. I definitely noticed the mammals. <laughs> <laughs> By little bits. Which now that I'm reading the model, I bet he this motto is new because I don't remember that, and that sort of gives it away. 
What is spell check? <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Okay, so this is an Amazon team. Yeah. It has four guard, it has two money blow, it has one tackle, and it has uh, seven blodge. Yep, and one sure feet, which is needed for a fairly slow uh, team, or average speed team, especially that's trying to do agi stuff. Mm -hmm. So, basically makes his catcher an essential movement eight piece. Mm -hmm. So that was Amazon. I like it. <laughs> yeah. That's, I don't really know what else there, to say there's about not really, there, There's not really much to say here. It's it's Amazon's, like, it looks okay. I think it's still in the TV range where it'll perform uh, okay, it, where, it, where it will perform okay. Uh, yeah. There's, it's like a bog standard team, which isn't bad, just it's not conductive to conversation. <laughs> yeah. He's got two bench, uh, uh, I know little bits uh, pretty well. Uh, he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. um, he he knows what he's doing for the most part. He can hold his own. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs in this uh, mini Swiss division. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have uh, Sugar in Spite. In all things night. It's a Dark Elf team. Yeah, By, uh, I like, I like Dark Death. Elf teams. Uh, so this one, it's pretty good Dark Elf team. He's got uh, 12 players. One is a uh, movement busted guard piece, which I know that feel. Um, I have one too. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we got a blodge guard blitzer, a mighty blow tackle blitzer, uh, blodge on all of his blitzers, and Raj on both of the witch elves. I am not a huge fan of the witch elf wrestle piece, but uh, I know people who are and they love it. So it's like just a different way to play. I mean, I think one wrestle witch elf, witch elf is good, especially if it rolls edgy up. It's a, it's a really good sacker. I, I don't know that I like two. I just don't like putting uh, edgy seven on the floor in the middle of a cage. So, I mean, that's just, that is or a not, risk. Not edgy. <laughs> AV seven, not edgy. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, Rod mm -hmm. Step Juggernaut's gonna be awesome for surfing stuff though. So that's I'm jealous of that. I wish mm -hmm. I had that on my team. Um, you know, but you had to give so. had to give it the mighty blow though. Like now, if you roll another double, you'll just be kicking yourself because you can't take the palm. Oh no, no, you would if you have a wrestle witch. I I I am of the field that if you are taking a wrestle witch and you roll a double, you get juggernaut. Because... Yeah, I, I I think you are right, but that goes back to why you shouldn't have two because a a uh, po a palming witch elf is really good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, and uh, it does also have mighty blow tackle blitzer as well. So that's a good. That is a good elf cleaner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two, this is a good team, mm -hmm. and uh, two guard players and kick. Yep, it needs a little bit more development, but yeah, it looks like solid. Yeah, and uh, I say it needs more development, but it's that TV sixteen twenty with a missing player because dark elves. Yeah, and he played only one season, and he didn't go mm -hmm. into the Devastational, so... A good Dark Elf team looks super bloaty, because the players are so expensive. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... We All have right. uh, the Royalton Circus, coached by Sir Willis the Third. Ooh, Kislev team. I'm pretty I like sure... Those teams. I'm pretty sure we covered this team last season. No, I don't think we did. Uh, I don't even remember. That name is so... Did... I could have sworn I covered Sir Willis. And the Royalton Circus sounds familiar as well. You know what? It doesn't matter. Let's look at the damn team. <laughs> uh, so, four catchers, three blitzers, uh... Pretty. I mean, he's missing two players, so it's his TV is a little deceptive. But even with both of them back, he'll be at fourteen fifty, which is pretty close to the middle for this division. This, most yeah. of the teams in this division are hovering right around the the fourteen hundred range. Fourteen. That's wait. Yeah, yeah, that was the right number. Yep. So. Um, let's take a look. I, the first uh, thing I notice, I see two edgy up linemen. 
Yeah, uh, that was the first thing I noticed as well. And they both have block. So, I mean, like, these are really good players. I, I feel like one of these should have... There's actually no... No, there's one wrestler on this team. I feel like one of these Agi4 linemen should be a wrestler. I think both of them should be, but that's just me. Um, I, I play Kislev where every lineman mm-hmm. gets wrestle first and tackle second, or maybe half of them get tackle second, half of them, or at least one or two strip balls, because your linemen are going to die quick. I mean, uh, that's, that's just something that happens with them. Mm-hmm. If they get to level one and level two, you make them sackers, you throw them right into that cage. You try to pop that ball loose, especially when you got four catchers. Mm-hmm. So you got one who can go in there, grab it, pop, leap in, or mm-hmm. grab it, pop out, uh, pass it to another mm-hmm. one and you're off to the races. I like to play them like Skaven. Um, uh, it is two plus with long legs, yeah. Uh, yep. And yeah, like I don't think you're wrong. I think Kislev is a team that should spam Wrestle. Uh, I think there's an argument for not t- taking Wrestle on a Agi 4 player. Uh, but also, you want at least one Agi 4 player who does have Wrestle because they are the perfect sackers. The other thing you could do with this, uh, you could instead of uh, getting your fourth blitzer, uh, and maybe if another blitzer gets hurt, use them as makeshift positionals. Um, uh, yeah, because they're true. already they're already bloaty mm-hmm. and in general. If you get into double on them, then you have mm-hmm. a two plus guard with block to go into a cage, uses an assist. Um, we just kind of use them as mm-hmm. uh, ball markers. Um, so. I do yeah. hope he's planning on going into a, pa- a Palmer with one of these blitzers. Uh... <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of a block guard, a mm-hmm. pseudo killer, and a uh, like, I like frenzy frenzy blitzers. I don't. I think Kislev only needs one killer. More than that will is bloating on a Kislev yeah. team because you're really oh, yeah. more of an agility team than you are uh, a bashy team. But you know, Scams are an agility team and they get Palmers. They get two of them. Mm-hmm. I think Kislev can afford... Well, Kislev's more expensive, but I think they can afford one. Uh, yeah. So, having said that, the, the next thing that actually caught my eye is that there is a Sprint Surefeet catcher. I'm wondering if he tried to make him... If he's making him into a one-turner? But that... It, it seems like a strange choice. Like, I understand taking these if you roll a movement up, but it seems like a very odd choice to take it like take it fresh the first skill he took was sure feet on this catcher yeah i do know that uh a lot of uh kislev coaches uh i'm not i'm not a huge kislev coach so i might be wrong on this but i know a lot of them like to do the two turn even if they receive first and then rely on sacking getting the ball back quick and scoring quickly Mm -hmm. um so he does make him an essentially a movement 10 player uh, since he can leap over a screen and just get the ball mm-hmm. and score it from wherever. Well, it's also nine. Yeah. Well, no, because he's got sprint. sprint oh, yeah, he does. Feet. You're right. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't have to be far into the opponent's field if you cage him up and then just let him, you know, score. You know, mm-hmm. that's really good for a two turn at the end of the half, too. So, I mean, uh, I don't hate mm-hmm. it. And uh, It's he... not what I would have gone with first, but... And, it, uh... it he is where a lot of the touchdowns have been funneled. Six touchdowns, uh, seven passes, three MVPs. Like, this player has soaked up a lot of SPP. Yep. Yeah, I Next mean, up, probably I, I don't think this player is bad, but I do think it's suboptimal. Yeah, I, maybe. I don't think this was the best possible choice of a lo- chain of level ups. Uh... It, let's see, it, it prep? Oh, I was right. It is from nine, wait, no, I did B and C, didn't I? Never yeah, mind. <laughs> uh, okay. And it has no stadium enhancement. Uh, I, this is definitely a team I'm going to watch, though. I think, I'm interested to see how they perform. Yeah. I mean, because Liv do very well late, so, mm-hmm. uh, We'll see. There'll probably be a team that does very well at the end of the mm. season. Um, but maybe they can uh, scrounge a couple okay. wins in the meantime on the way there. And uh, last team we're looking at, because the number 10 hasn't signed up yet, uh, is uh, Frosting and Filling. Now, I know that I covered this one. 
Yeah, this was 9B mm -hmm. last year. Because we talked about that thrower. Uh, or uh, the double thrower. Oh. A couple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, see, do I see he's that... picked up leader. Uh, he's definitely had leader before. I just don't remember. Yeah. Uh... Wait. We we were we were discussing mm -hmm. the, uh, the having two throwers I believe was the the thing, mm -hmm. that, especially when you had a sure hands agi four lineman. Yeah, that was that was the conundrum. Mm -hmm. um, but he picked up plus strength on his berserker. Yeah, I saw that. That's really good. That's awesome. You give that guy uh, tackle. I would say tackle next, maybe or mm -hmm. piling on. I guess he's. Uh, but I would go with tackle because you don't have to take an assist to you know take out mm -hmm. a, a blodger now and um, uh he has a beer stand in it for his stadium i love beer stands for uh norse yeah it's pretty nice uh, uh things that i would like to see on this team is this I would like to see. new no it's not new it's 12 matches old it's just it just hasn't gotten anything yeah <laughs> I would say try and focus uh, getting SVP on the ults if you can, uh, um, and I, mm -hmm. I would, get, you know, it's really not that difficult for an ult to pick up a ball. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are find yourself in a stalling position and you're already up, you know, try and get a yeah. touchdown on an ult. Um, the the Yeti will level when he levels. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't give him the ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Yeti can probably do without it. Uh, yeah. I, is the Yeti new, by the way? I feel like the Yeti's new. Yeah, well, six matches. It's new-ish. New-ish. I think this team played in the Devastational. Yeah, it, it must have, at least a little bit, because they definitely didn't have plus strength at the end of last season. Uh, it did not. Bounce Castle Enthusiast uh, was the last team he played, which was one of the ones that we covered. Mm -hmm. um, so looks like he probably got it in that last game, and we didn't oh. do it video at the end of the season so okay then so, yeah. well you know what i don't regret it <laughs> <laughs> okay uh let's quickly pick like one playoff spot and also worth mentioning this is a 10 out of 10 t uh well 9 out of 10 division meaning that they will have three rounds of swiss at the end of the season um my my gut wants to say it's gonna be cr boys with that disgusting what elf team but my heart wants to pick one of my old 9c teammates and of those i would probably pick a uh, little bits for mammal of unusual size i mean so one, I, one of those two is what i'm gonna say i mean it's gonna be the fat earthers right possibly no. i hope so no yeah. i don't think it will be i would love it but I don't they could, think, they I could don't maybe think so. they could maybe get stunty cup though uh yeah i think that is a reasonable uh, goal this season, especially now that they are no longer competing with Ravenpoe. Yep. Um, uh, I am actually going to say I need to double check here. How did they do last season? Uh, they Oh, you know what? They weren't actually in last season that long. Did okay though. I'm going to go and I'm going to take a gamble and say frosting and filling. Frosting and filling. All right. It's, ba like it's baseless anyway, so why not? Yeah. They're also literally the highest... No, they're the second highest TV team in this division. I actually thought you were going to pick the Lizards, but I know you I are considered... racist against Lizards. I actually was considering the Lizards, but... Mm. You just don't like Lizardmen. I know that. I don't That's know. cool. L let me put it this way. There... Wave touched you in a bad way. <laughs> I get it. There's a high chance that I will switch to the Lizards at during the half season if they perform well. Okay. Uh, but I don't want to do it for right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that only took like four to five minutes. So, you know, we're going good. It doesn't yeah. matter. We will be sticking, trying to keep it in a an hour or less for future videos, but I don't care for this one. It'll take as long as it takes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you tell him. You tell them and hey, this one's at 14 out of 14. Division 10A. I see a couple of admin uh, teams in here, so I, I think oh. there are two that haven't picked up their tickets yet, if my math is right. Shoot. So 12, 12 are in here right now. Uh, There are... Hmm. 12 real teams. 
Yeah, that's what it looks like. Damn it. Oh well. You know how it goes. You didn't. Su- you did not accept your ticket in time, so we will just not look at your team today. Yep. I'm afraid that's how it goes. If if for no other reason than because I literally have no means of finding your team if it's not if you haven't accepted your ticket like i can't do what superfed did and look at invited team members i cannot do that uh so anyway uh the first team common nightmares coached by harry Koo. this is the greenhorn team uh, and it's already got 1300 of, stp all of these will be greenhorn teams this yeah. is this is the high development greenhorn division well, this, they got a 1300 TV right out the gate, which is uh, pretty good, except for it looks like most of it is in getting additional mm. players as it is to more than it is to getting development. Uh, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this play, this team did not start with two werewolves. Um, or perhaps the yeah one werewolf is five matches the other has one perhaps the first the second werewolf died but I feel like going by the layout it was probably just started with only one uh, possibly it does have okay that's actually only one ghoul uh, common nightmares being chased naked what what was the t- no team motto you need to get on the team motto but uh being chased naked in public being stuck. Falling to death. Horde injury. Drowning. Dead people. And Pokemon. And being attacked. I have a feeling that uh, the motto is going to be not having a motto. Will be his common nightmare. (sighs) Well, you know what? I can hope otherwise. (laughs) Uh, Do you want to talk about the team for like 30 seconds? I need to go close the door. (laughs) Okay, yeah. We'll go quick. Uh, we got a Blodge Ghoul. We've got uh, two werewolves that are an MVP away from leveling. We got a Mighty Blow White. We got a Block Flesh Golem. All of those are good things. And a DP Zombie. Uh, you can't see me, but I'm doing a thumbs up. And that's that's my assessment. I mean, it's a good it's a good start. Oh, that's a good way to come back, and that's my assessment. I have no idea yeah. what your assessment was, so I'll just assume <laughs> that it was something that you said something intelligent, and I agree with you. Oh, um, yeah, it was great. <laughs> Everyone will tell you how amazing it was. Okay, so uh, there is one Mighty Blow White, which I like, and there is one Block Flesh Gold, which I like. I mean, it is a, it is a Greenhorn, so, you know, that happens. Uh, I'm actually surprised that neither Werewolf leveled up. Well, I mean, one of them has only played one game. I'm surprised that being chased has not leveled up. Yeah, I... Uh looked at the um team before they started playing uh this season and i don't remember that werewolf being there so i think that's a a new addition they might have played one game this season already uh he has five games played so he probably has yeah uh yeah i'm really surprised he didn't get the two touchdowns on this werewolf but you know whatever it's greenhorn (laughs) And it's it was it was the Greenhorn, and it is a new division. So you know, there's not that much pressure. You'll get plenty of time to develop insane insane werewolves, just like everyone else in Ariel. Yeah, uh, I would I would say my only advice, probably right out the gate, depending on who you're playing next, you might not mm-hmm. need one of those zombies just to save yourself some uh, uh, inducements coming your way. Um, there is also uh, 1,700 in the bank, so he might put a down payment towards his state of enhancement. Yeah, because I'm a huge fan also of the beer stand with uh, um, Necro. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the best one. A lot of people probably say the anti-rock stadium or the the uh, anti-pitch invasion stadium. Anti- but... Those are both popular choices with people who don't like fun. No, that's not true. Like Pitch, <laughs> pitch, pitch invasion in particular is like objectively a bad design. I feel like the rock is mostly fine, but you know that's just me. Yeah, but <laughs> any team that has uh, good, you know, frenzy surfers, uh, I like. Uh, I like the beer stands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you like, get them off the pitch, and then they might not come back for the next drive either. Beer stand is oh, is acceptable on any team that has natural frenzy, except for dwarves. Yeah. If you're playing dwarves, then t- then no, you have better options. 
Okay, uh, let's move on. It is a uh, Horn Stars, uh, one thousand no, two hundred and. No, C is two. C is a hundred. So. What is I M? A I think million? M is million. M might be. It, it's a, a thousand. millennium. It is a thousand. So two thousand and eighteen. Oh, hey, yeah, that's the current year. That makes sense. Yeah, Horn Stars 2018. Got it. Triple We're X, smart. X, X, Horn. I mean, I figured it out. We figured it out eventually, right? Um, yeah. So, oh, this is the Chaos Horn Team. Horn Stars. Horn Stars. Uh, I get it. Yeah, I, uh, I get it. Uh, it took me a second. <laughs> uh, bend over, Lance Thruster, Luke Thought. Hey, hey, hey. They stole this name from Rumblebee. What, Dirk Diggler? Luke Thywalker. Oh. He might not have known that Rumblebee had one like that. Rumblebee had this... A, I'm pretty sure it was, it was his werewolf who was not Rod. Or, no, it might have been one of his flesh golems. But anyway, one of Rumblebee's players had this exact name. <laughs> I think I think a lot of these are, like, fairly common, uh... Uh you know, puns. Probably, for... probably, yeah. That one just stood out to me because Rumblebee. Yeah, um, I've already seen one. Gotcha. Okay, but yeah, like, uh, there's two Mighty Blow Chaos Warriors, so going heavy on the kill, kill, kill right away. Uh, there is a plus strength beastman, there is a block beastman, and there is a plus agility beastman. That's actually, the, I love the beastman. Um, uh, and when... Seeing Mighty Blow first on Chaos Warriors makes me think that he's really not going for the playoffs this season more than he is to just mm. go ahead and speed up development and uh, be ready for next season mm -hmm. to just mow through people. Um, I don't, but I don't like Mighty Blow first on Chaos Warriors, but it's not that it's bad. It's just my personal preference is I don't like it. Yeah, there's uh, different ways that people and do it. Honestly, I feel like this team got it. It got five level ups and a death or two uh, from its Greenhorn experience, and I feel like it got exactly the level ups it would have it could have wanted. Like this is the yeah. perfect start to a chaos team. You have your ball carrier already picked out. You have a plus strength beastman to bully the shit out of things, and you have a little bit of killing power. All it needs is reliability yep. and more killing power. Yeah, I would get block next on those uh, Mighty Blow Chaos Warriors because just being able to add that extra dice to mm -hmm. your pool of being able to knock things over uh, will help you. Yeah, I agree. I am not a fan of Claw Palm on Chaos Warriors. I think if you're doing, I think a Beastman is clearly a superior Claw Palmer to a Chaos Warrior. Uh, Claw, sure, take it on what take it on your third or fourth level, but don't. I don't like pylon on the chaos warrior it's just more useful standing the uh, the only way i would do it would be if it somehow already got a double and i picked jump up first but i still don't know if i would do it i would probably just give it dodge but um actually i would probably give it diving tackle uh mm -hmm. but yeah it's not not a bad start for a team. It'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how this one uh, does throughout the rest of the uh, uh, season. Yeah, like, I think either they will win a lot. Actually, no. I think if they win a lot, then they will murder a lot. And they might murder a lot yeah. either way. But I think I think this is a murder-your-way-to-victory team. And uh, yeah. it's definitely going to be really, really damn scary in a season or two if they, met, if they keep up this, the momentum that is present here. So, like... Yeah. Uh, even if they don't get to playoffs, this is going to be a pretty scary team by the end of the season, I think. Yeah, um, I think so, too. And uh, moving on. The Borner Boys, pro coached by Prozoc. Uh, it's a hard life. I'm Okay, obviously this team is new, but I'm pretty sure I've covered Prozoc before. Uh, that is a new name to me, so... Do not it, know. it rings the familiarity bell, but then again, so does Sir Willis, so what the hell do I know? Uh, so, this is a Camry team. Doesn't look like a whole lot of development has happened on it yet. Just uh, got three levels so far. Mm -hmm. Mighty Blow, Tomb Guardian, which I like Mighty Blow on the first Tomb Guardian level, but then I start trying to get more guard. 
Mm -hmm. um, unless you get blocker, you know, plus strength, um, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, this team, throw is, off. this team has clearly fallen into the tr the classic trap of the first Tomb Garden levels up, then it soaks up all the other SPP with Mighty Blow. Yep. Need to score touchdowns on those Tomb Guardians. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that hard, right? I mean, it, it's actually not that much harder than scoring on most of the rest of the team. A five plus, a five plus compared to a four plus. Like if if you're near the end zone and you have a couple turns, you don't really lose much by trying it. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't. I maybe I wouldn't do it while I was down, but I would. S yeah, if you're if you're in a stalling position, mm -hmm. you're already up. Yeah, there's no reason to not go ahead and try. Mm -hmm. Or if it somehow bounces into his hands, you know, just blitz him free and let mm -hmm. him run in. Exactly. Uh, that's how you get good Tomb Guardians. You score with them. Uh, but you know what I noticed that I think is really interesting? What was uh, that? The names. Full Salute, One-Eyed Snake. Uh, I get it. <laughs> Morning Glory, Purple Homewrecker. Uh, Custer we got, a, we got a bunch Raider. of comedians. Uh, yeah, this I'm I'm just sensing a theme in these teams. <laughs> Wonder if he's. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Stick with old Drizzly Ding Dong. Well, you know, uh, I cannot accuse them of being off of being off theme. So there's that. <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. Um, I would be quite surprised if this team won the season although you know i've seen it happen before uh but but there are also a team that could potentially be very scary by the end of it yeah camry teams are scary like uh, or at least they can be it's sort of the same way as the chaos if they murder enough players then they have a decent shot of d then they're probably gonna do pretty well in the season Although probably not as well as as whatever elf tops the division. <laughs> yeah. Uh, assuming there's a good elf candidate, I haven't we haven't looked at them all yet. Oh, uh, I don't think we've seen one yet for this division. No. Sugar and spikes and everything nice. Didn't we like just have one of these? Yeah. Um, so sugar and spikes, I believe, is walking carpets' uh, greener cousin. Uh, uh, Weak so. Night Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have the, uh, the, I'm, I'm, either they are related or they're rivals hmm. and they hate each other. I think that's what it is. Luckily, there's a division to separate them, mm -hmm. uh, because, or else it would just be chaos and they would just murder each other and not mm -hmm. play the game. Um, uh, so, but, uh, yeah. This team has Guard on a Blitzer, it has Mighty Blow on a Blitzer, it has Block on a Line Orc, and it has a Armor Busted Blitzer who, I have to assume, is going to get fired as soon as he has money to replace him. Yeah, I would say you would you definitely replace that as soon as you, you get it. Unless, for some reason, he levels in the next game and he gets, like, plus strength. Then he, I could see you keep it. I mean, but... barring fringe cases like that, you probably fire this Blitzer as soon as you can replace him. Yep. Uh... And, uh, yeah, like, this is a pretty standard starting orc team. Uh, I think it could pro it could probably use a 12th player. That could be whatever player he feels like putting in it. Probably not a thrower, though. <laughs> I would go uh, with another lineman myself. It could um, be a lineman. It could be a troll, even, if he wants. Yeah, uh, but I definitely want to replace that uh, blitzer before getting that 12th man. I feel like trolls are actually pretty awkward on orc teams. Like... A troll on a developed orc team is actually really good, but in order to have a good troll on a developed orc team, you need to take it when it's when the troll isn't good, because yeah. a rookie troll is not good on a developed orc team. A developed yeah. troll is good on a developed orc team. Yeah, he's a uh, kind of a, a weird player, but and he's also going to be on your line of scrimmage most mm -hmm. of the time. So troll does have re regen though. He does. He does, but. It's you don't want to be leaving your mm -hmm. strength five hundred and fifty k TV piece, you know, on the on the line, ready for mm -hmm. a chaos warrior with yeah. block claw mighty blow to just um, take out. I would also like to see uh, this t after they have the players worked out. I'd like to see this team rush a stadium enhancement as well. 
Orcs yeah. have several very strong options, including the 10k uh, dribble snot. Yep. Novel's altar is good for the orcs. Uh, I I like weather dome for orcs just because they're not mm -hmm. very agile normally, and weather can really make that hurt. Orc GFIs are already hard enough. You don't need a blizzard mm -hmm. to make it even harder. Oh, hey, and you know what else? The players aren't a bunch of dick jokes. Uh, That's true. But one, but he did misspell cinnamon. Uh, it was two ends. Two ends. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, orcs are usually pretty solid early on. They're they're usually pretty solid until they get killed by kill chaos. Really. Yeah. That is the weak point of orcs. Orcs are a pretty good team for, for a relatively like they're never an ex. Hmm. Yeah, usually orcs are like a pretty solid team, I think. Yeah. Until it runs into claw. Until it, yeah, exactly. You can still uh, beat claw. It's just that you don't know if you'll have a team at the end of it afterwards. Mm -hmm. and it's already hard to develop. And orcs. Uh, I expect that Saffron the Thrower will roll a plus strength, as seems to be the, the tradition in REL. Like, yeah, you... were werewolves get claw palm. Uh, actually, werewolves get plus strength too, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just all of, that's all of Rebel. It's not just Rel, so, you know, you get mm -hmm. you get an Orc Thrower, you get a Strength 4 Orc Thrower. That's just how it works. That's just how it works. Although, honestly, I think the movement up would be better. Movement or agility would both be better than the Strength, I think. Yeah. But, you know, that's 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 neither here nor there. Uh, moving on. Uh, we have the Jonestown Journeyman, coached by Rental747. We'd prefer to keep our namesake off the team. Huh? That's the that's the motto. I'm just wondering what that means. I don't know, but what I do know is that I'm pretty sure these are default names. But you know what? It is a it is ostensibly a team full of journeymen, so you know that kind of works for on theme. Oh, he prefers to keep his namesake off the team. He doesn't want to be playing down players. Ah, ha, ha, I get I it. Get it. Uh, yeah, good luck with that with Pro Elves. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in fact, like this, team seems to, this team seems, seems to have only 10 players, two of which are MNG. But hey, you got Journeyman for the line of scrimmage, so you got that? That's good. I mean, uh, they're, I mean they're functionally identical anyway. Like, look at those names. Yeah. <laughs> so what I see so far for development, we've got a, you know, Blood Step. Blitzer, which mm -hmm. is fairly standard. Um, you got a catcher that's already turning into a stacker. That's Raj. That's good. Mm -hmm. I would maybe do uh, if he gets another level before uh, other players can. I would go tackle next, maybe. Oh, but strip ball is also good, mm -hmm. um, especially at low TV. Yeah, um, at, at low TV, you're actually more likely to strip a ball than you are to for tackle to come in. Tackle just has yeah. more general utility. Yeah, uh, you know, catcher with guard is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but other... This team only has two catchers. I think it needs one more catcher, probably. Uh, I, would... uh, this, I think the standard start is uh, two blitzers, two catchers, and a thrower. And yeah, but I mean, rolls. I think the next player to buy is a catcher. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, especially if you can get... I would get block first, maybe, on the, the catcher with guard, because if you're going to be leaving a base... Uh, you know, I agree. Um, block's probably going to help you mm -hmm. out more. Um, or maybe do uh, the argument for dodge too, because uh, at low TV, players don't typically have uh, block on everybody. So uh, he might re-roll that if that's mm -hmm. the one that does it. That so. is actually true. That's sort of a look at the your opponents when you roll it. Sort of. Yeah. Like eventually you're, you want to go blodge. But uh, depending on how much... Um, Depending on how much block is on your opponents, it makes a big difference for whether which one is better. Yeah. Uh, so. At least with a team that you're going to be ostensibly on a, a team, a player that's ostensibly going to be on offense. Uh, if you're strictly defense, then unless you're playing it's like dwarves, dodge is always better. Yeah, and then you've already got your three team rerolls, mm -hmm. which is good. Uh, got your path carry, so. At this point, you know, get a catcher, start filling out your bench, and I think you'll be in good shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
that's a team to watch for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, we have the Serpent Lord, coached by Koloski. Life is a cycle of snake eating tail. And it's Dark Elves. Yeah, uh, I love me some Dark Elves. At 1050 TV. So, you know, they, our... they have not bought all of their players else. Actually, no, they have in this next game. It's, well, uh, it's a pretty beat up team. <laughs> yeah. Um, this team has three perms on it. Yeah. And so... also, it hasn't bought its fourth Blitzer yet. Yeah, or its third uh, Regal. It... It might have had it because he doesn't have an apothecary yet. Um, so, oh. you have fifty k in the bank to buy that first. Um, yeah. That 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 should be your your. You should take that into your next game before mm. doing it. Um, other than that, you got a kick lineman, which is good. You've got uh, a block lineman uh, and a mighty blow blitzer, so that's good. Uh, I the runner is new. So he did a Witch Elf and Witch Elf, no runner, and I don't know if you can get three or four blitzers that way. You only get three. You okay. only get three with that one. So um, so he did start off with three blitzers and the Witch Elf then. Yep. So he went he went straight for the runner. Mm-hmm. Um but I would still go ahead and get that apothecary as soon as possible. And then after that, get your fourth blitzer. Mm-hmm. You might might start looking at uh, trimming a lineman uh, off of that team. I'd probably get rid of the move busted one. Um, and then... Then after you have the Blitzer, do you get the team reroll or the Witch Elf first? Uh, you definitely the team reroll first, I think, personally. Um, it's Dark Elves. They mm-hmm. don't come with a lot of skills that negate, you know, needing rerolls. So getting I, that third one is huge for them. I think it depends a little bit more on the state of the team at the time and who they're playing against next because like there's only 10k difference between one chances are if you can afford the reroll you can also afford the witch elf there are definitely yeah. situations where it's better to have a second witch elf than a reroll but i think as general advice I th- what you're saying is probably correct i would i would also maybe with the state of this replace the atchy busted blitzer before getting the reroll uh because you don't want him taking up too many mvps when you're going to want to replace them at some point anyway. So I mean, the sooner the better. You're going to want to replace both these blitzers, but I think you I think you probably want to prioritize filling out the rest of your team before you prioritize busting, uh, replacing suboptimal players. Well, there's not much left that he needs uh, other than the second Witch Elf, mm-hmm. but if the other and Witch the Elf... And the fourth blitzer. Yeah, but the thing is with, with Dark Elves, you really want to go ahead and get Blodge as quickly as possible, and Having a second witch elf that doesn't have, if the first one doesn't have Blodge, and the runner on the field at the same time, if that one doesn't, you're protecting two to three players with the rest of your dudes, and they don't have Blodge either. I like to try and minimize that. You know, more expendable pieces Hmm. and less of my expensive players getting, you know, busted up. Well, you know, that's fair. Uh, In terms of the actual development, uh, there is Kick, there is Block, and there is Mighty Blow. So I think, I think we have a clear choice for primary blitzer right here. Oh yeah, you blitz with him. You get one blitz turn. You make it him every time unless he's already got a free hit. Mm-hmm. Make that might make that mighty blow milk the injuries out of your opponents. That or if you can serve somebody with the witch. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Next up, uh, that's cheese, so it must be rats, right? It's rats. Bambino's Rebellion, coached by Arbor, and your team motto here. Enter it. It's telling you to enter it. It's, it's, uh, it's not a suggestion. It is instructions. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This okay, is... this team has no level ups. No, but it has a rat ogre. Uh, it does. That's not something you see every day. He's played two matches already. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Only two matches. So this is this team only did only participated in the second half of the Greenhorn. We only got two games in. Oh, okay. So he probably started with it, and so he instead of buying an apothecary first, probably mm-hmm. used his earnings to get uh, a gutter runner or two that he was missing. Or from a reroll. Uh, 
or th- or that. I don't know how that maths out. But... Uh, I mean, it's only a twenty k difference. So depending we on the winnings, added... it could be either or for sure. Wait, no, it's a forty k difference actually. He definitely added somebody because he's got twelve mm-hmm. players. So well, let's see. You know, no. Let's let's check this one. The last gutter runner has played zero matches. Gotcha. So he got the gutter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scooty. Scooty's gonna scoot to touchdowns. He's gonna, get, he's gonna score all. He's gonna score them all. I'm calling it right now. Scooty yeah, like, is gonna be MVP. This is um, this is fun. This is basically a rookie team. But I, honestly, I don't think that's even bad. Like. No, Skaven played better down TV. Yeah, it's Skaven. Uh, like as long as the Rad Ogre does not soak up all the TV, which is a genuine concern, uh, at least from soaking it away from the Storm Vermin. As long as it does not soak SPP away from the Storm Vermin, like Skaven has the tools to get a lot of SP on Gunners really quickly, and then the team becomes amazing because Gunner Runners are OP. Yep. But I would get the Apothecary next, and then I don't even really know if you need anything else. Maybe another Lion Rat later in the season. Two. Uh, si- save for money. You can. There's a couple stadium options you can look at. Um, Wizard. Wizard. <laughs> no comment. I don't, uh, I don't know if Wizard Stadium. I really am actually a fan of the Skaven Thrower, but I know a lot of people aren't. Uh, I, I'm give or take. It doesn't matter. I can I can use it or I can not use it. Like I see the argument from not having the thrower if you have a developed Skaven team. If you're got if you have four developed gutter runners, you don't really need the thrower. But on a rookie team, having that sure hands is actually really helpful. Yeah. If I if I get one when I start a Skaven team, I don't apo him. He has no apple rights and if he dies, I typically don't replace him. But he's nice right at the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, like that's fair. I mean, like, let's put it this way. It's easier to set up a one-turner with the thrower than without in a rookie team. Yep. Or a, well, yeah. Just an end statement. This is rat, so it'll probably do really well. Uh, moving on. We have another Dark Elf team. There are definitely Woo-hoo. players missing here. Uh, elves behaving badly. Coached by Queen Elizabeth. Enter team motto. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you're if you're watching these, uh, just know that Chaos Ubalu is judging you for not having a motto, and he will continue to judge you every week mm. until you get one. Uh, I've, and we have evidence to back that up. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is, uh, you know, <laughs> it may have less players, but I think this is a healthier team mm. than uh, the last yeah. Dark Elf team uh, we looked at. No runner. Uh, it has an Apo. It has two rerolls, so I think it's saving up for the. It could be saving up for either the fourth blitzer or the third reroll. Yeah, I, I typically get, and I don't remember if I said this in the last one. Mm-hmm. I, I I like the one witch three blitzer start. I will go fourth blit or ap- apothecary first, then fourth blitzer, third reroll, then witch. That's typically how mm-hmm. I do it. Um, but yeah, so, uh good development on it so far you got a plus strength witch elf which is going to be amazing and i'm jealous and i want it the third Uh, player that regularly rolls plus strengths although not so much in rel this is more of a big o and g-man thing which maybe the strength for witch elves (laughs) maybe maybe he's the beginning of the tide and then it will rub off on me going up the ladder well you know we're unlikely to be in the same division so sure why not (laughs) And he's got, you know, Mighty Blow Blitzer, because apparently everybody gets a Mighty Blow Blitzer for their first Blitzer. Um, and uh, Dodge Lineman. Mm. I, I I would have possibly preferred Kick there. I don't have a Kicker on my team, because my first Lineman that leveled got Guard. Uh, and then I kept rolling Guards for Lineman, mm-hmm. and I could never find a place to put Kick. Uh, but I do love Kick on a Dark Elf team. Um, mm-hmm. I, like to, I like to kick it deep. Then have a couple fast guys go back to pressure the ball carrier. Try and get them to cage up further mm-hmm. back. That way, my screen has more time to form and mm-hmm. hold them back. Um, but there's also an argument for picking short in certain setups too, to and hope you get a blitz. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I kicks kicks just a really good skill for yeah. elves. 
So uh, I have a question for you, as the resident mm -hmm. Dark Alpha expert. Uh, what do you take on your second level up on a Mighty Blow Blitzer? Uh, I went Tackle when I did it because I was playing... Uh, I had Elves followed by Stunties followed by Amazons, mm -hmm. I think coming up so it's like i need tackle yeah and i don't know i don't know when i'm going to be able to have a chance to get it again so especially on you know mm -hmm. the guy that i want to blitz with anyway so i went tackle first mm -hmm. and then i really was protecting him more than any other player mm -hmm. because if he goes down you know that's a lot of my season because we had a lot of azure teams last season mm -hmm. um yeah as uh as not an elf expert, that sounds correct to me. There are several other elf teams in this division, so having that tackle is definitely useful. And it also makes him a better killer. Like, tackle on that blitzer is never going to be bad. Yeah, because you, when you're using dark elves, you're not trying to really get into the weeds with them like you can with a mm -hmm. Norse team. Like, you can. You're AV8. You, a lot of teams will get, you know, block as their first level up on their linemen. Uh, you can do that, uh, but you want to you're going to lose that fight against most bash teams eventually. So you want to kind of use them as a uh, more of like a surgical scalpel, you know, find the weak spot, hit it hard. And with the blitzer, that's mighty blow tackle. You know, you get their ball carrier. That's the only dodge piece. And mm -hmm. you get in there, hopefully you knock them out of the game. And then you might, that's, that's all you really need to do. You take the ball off of them and win. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I'm listening to this, and I'm thinking of the one time I, I, I've I ever played Dark Elves, and you know what? You don't want to hear that, because it'll make you weep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it actually went quite well for me, but it'll make you, like, upset. <laughs> What'd okay. you do? Uh, well, it was, a, it was a league that had nothing but elves in it. It was an elf league, and I built the killiest elf team I could conceive. If it's all elves, and you get it's the successes league, right? Uh, it was the what I was predating that actually. Okay, well, I mean that's acceptable though because mm -hmm. you're going to be playing against AV7 and High Elves, so. I t I took block on everything first. Yeah, I that's what I do. <laughs> uh, block or wrestle. I think I might have had a dirty player as well. Uh, I want one of those, but I just don't have. A so uh, anyway, uh, calculators coached by Darth Hideous. Enter team motto. Do it. No, it's cal calculators. It's like an undead calcium. team. It I, I don't care. They lost that privilege by not entering the team motto. Um, Fair enough. It is an undead team. Uh, it looks like they got all default names, too, which is disappointing. But Are these default names? They have, like, I, Dirt... I'm not sure. Like, I haven't seen a lot of ghoul names, but, like, Dirt Leaper? I know, I, I know I've had a, a ghoul named Rot Chewer before when I've made a default team name. Um, uh, and he's got two... Two Titus zombies, two Leo zombies. I think these. Yeah, might I think be... these are default names. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, if that's how you want to play it, that's how you want to play it. But it, I feel it mm -hmm. makes you connect more with your team if you you name them. And I think this team has only played one game. Uh, it has uh, played two games, so the other one who got the MVP must have died. Or yeah, maybe, actually. or maybe it was like a a star player or something. That would be unfortunate. You played two development games and one of your MVPs goes to a star player. There was... Uh, no deaths, so... Hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but the yeah. World, the world might never know. Traditionally, Undead does pretty good in their first season in Rel. So yep. even though... It'll be an uphill battle for this team because it's a developed. It is a not developed team in a developed division. Uh, but you know what? It's not that developed, so I think they can catch up. And if they pull off the undead bullshit, then I mean, it's, it's not really fair. I mean, it's only really bullshit when they roll a whole lot of dumps and stat ups on the mummies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I like undead teams. Um, I don't like playing them myself, but uh, I like seeing them. Yeah. So. Except when they have bullshit mummies. Yeah. Just roll doubles on mm. your mummies, you'll be set. So yeah, like there's not really much to say here now, but it, this could be a yeah. scary team. It, uh, it has the potential to be scary. Mm. Okay. 
All right. We have next the Greenskin Brawlers, coached by Professor Chaos. Put in your team motto, damn it. <laughs> uh, and, okay, these are default names. We got, uh, they were 2-0 in the Greenhorn, which is good. I got two mm -hmm. guards to start with and a Mighty Blow, which is good. Mm -hmm. Uh... You know, for two games, you can't really uh, really ask for much more. Maybe MVPs on the Black Orcs, but okay. I mean, this team should hire a goblin. Yeah, if you're if you're playing with a troll, might as well get if the you're, goblin. If you're there, I don't. There's no good reason to start with a troll unless you have a goblin. You only need one, and you don't need him on the pitch very often. But you should have him there. Just for that fringe case where he's actually useful. Yeah, and you can do a one turn. Mm -hmm. uh, the only re this is why I don't like the troll at the start is because you now have an eleven man roster, and your defensive line is going to be a troll, your one lineman, and then a black orc. I mean, honestly, it's probably a troll and two black orcs. Possibly, I, I would. I still wouldn't want to put the lineman. Uh, I wouldn't. I would rather throw the lineman to the wolves then you know risk that i think he can get away with it right now yeah especially since the troll has guard yeah that works too because then both will be strength five basically mm -hmm. so all right uh he also does have three rules and his apple so like i mean uh, other than his 12th player this t team probably has everything he wants in terms of like buying stuff i mean he doesn't have the statement hats either again Good state enhancements, good on orcs. Pick some, pick yeah. something you like, and just take it. I personally, if you're not going to go with the goblin, or I still think you should, but I would still go ahead and grab a lineman mm -hmm. as well, because uh, I like one kick orc lineman and one dirty player orc lineman. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to disagree with you there, uh, Cryboys. Black orcs should always take block first. Oh, you're not the, talking to me. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> black, the, there are only really two situations where a black orc should take something that is not block first. That is, one, when a black orc just died and you need him to catch up, so you take Mighty Blow first so that he levels up faster. Uh, which I do not think is, good, is a good idea on a rookie team, but is a good idea on a developed team who needs to replace them. And the other case is when you roll plus strength. Uh, I think there's also an argument for taking guard first if for some reason you're struggling to get any black orc development and you find yourself getting out strength. Um, but you've already got two guard on this team. I so mean, I if you're, if you're game. playing orcs and you're getting out strength, then you, you have much bigger problems. Dude, I played uh, some orcs in CCL and I just could not get a level in a black orc even when my, all of my blitzers were level four. It was, and even if one got a level, it would die for some freak accident. Mm -hmm. So I just could not get any guard or stuff. So speaking, that's 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 the argument I would make with black orcs. Speaking of that, first. though, I do like the guard on this on the blitzer. Like an orc team, I ideally should by the by the end of the second season, an orc team should have at least six guard players. Yeah. I'm um, also a fan of a Frenzy Blitzer on this one, mm -hmm. too. Which is also around the time when you start being a real pain in the ass for, for dwarves. Because dwarves can't really handle a teams that have the same amount of guard as them, but also more strength. Yep. They just need to pray that they get lucky. Uh, okay, uh, let's go on to... We have, like, one team left? Two teams left. Two left. Uh, we have another undead team. Yeah, it is. No one plays Undead anymore. Well, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but someone else in your division actually does play Undead more. Jasper Saurus Rex. Uh, but you know what? I like your... Well... Yeah, I like yours better. That might not be fair, because you've clearly played your ga game in this... Division? I don't really remember much of a difference... I don't know. Uh, he Other than he's he's named his players uh, after he's, after dead rock stars. He has named I his like players. It. He has a team motto. Uh, is Billy Idle dead? 
He has one less ghoul in favor of more of one more zombie. Is Billy Idol dead? I didn't think he was. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I guess he, everybody else on this list is dead, so I'm assuming Billy Idol's dead. Did I miss that? Okay. I'll have to look that up afterwards. Um, so far, uh, no development other than a pending level up on a mummy, which hopefully it's doubles. Yeah. Got my fingers crossed for you. Mm -hmm. A block mummy is awesome. So it's um, plus strength, so it's lodge. Like, you know what? Mummies can be real bullshit if they roll a lot of stat ups and doubles. But yep. otherwise, they're like. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> and some people uh, made fun of me for this when I had my Undead team in the Rebel Spin League, or Rebel Spin League, uh, but I got plus movement on one of them, and it's useful. He keeps up with the rest mm. of the zombies. And you can stand up blitz with them without ha with having to roll a GFI. Yeah, like, if you're using him as a pivot, then I could see that. So, something to think about. I wouldn't take it, though, if you roll double fives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely take a double over a plus movement. Uh, yeah, like, depending on where that mummy is in development when you take plus movement, then I could see it. I would not take it on a rookie mummy, but I might take it on, like, a level three one or level four. It, the third level up. I took it first. Yeah, no, you're, you're bad. <laughs> hey, that team went undefeated until I retired it because I got bored with it. Guard is definitely better than uh, than plus movement on a mummy. <laughs> yeah, well, my first three... Uh, yeah, it's, oh, I'm not going to talk about my, that old team anymore. Okay, right. uh, last team of the night. We have Hierarchy, coached by Locust Cor Cosant. Uh, every man in his proper place. It's Bretonians, and yeah. you know, I I just want to comment on this. I love it. On the page where you can see all of the players, the one who's sitting on top is a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird hierarchy. Yeah, all of his, uh, all of his uh, expensive dudes are chilling down there at the bottom. But I guess they are the foundation of the team. There are only ten players on this team. So, only one level up so far, which is mm -hmm. a uh, dodge on your blitzer, which is good. So mm -hmm. he went the four blitzers, two rerolls build. Yeah, I like the I like the three rerolls, three blitzers build. Um, but that is a personal preference. I um, I'm in the extreme minority on this, but I think the I think Brett should actually start with only two blitzers. Interesting. Uh, you can get. A lot more mind, uh, light. You can get a lot more peasants that way, which is great for fouling. And peasants are one of the most cost-effective players in the game. Uh, it, it it gives your team more staying power. It gives you a lot more offensive power because you can foul. And blitzers are one of those players where they're really good, but they're really expensive. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm comparing a blitzer to a gutter runner, a gutter runner costs 70k. I can afford four gutter runners for the cost of three blitzer of three knights, rather. Yep. Uh, and that is not really equitable. If you have four knights right away, it bloats up the TV on your team, uh, which is bad because Bretts aren't great at handling inducements against them, and also because they have really a really good inducement game. Although they don't have chainsaws, I'm still say that they should. Um, uh, they're too they're too good for for uh, special weapons. No, they aren't. <laughs> Secret weapons. Get real. No, they aren't. No, they're not. But they but they can hire cheap elf uh, star players who are actually complement their team very well. Yeah, uh, so was it, is Eldril one of the ones they can get? I believe they can get Eldril. Uh, they can get the 150 guy. Uh, I don't remember what his, his name is. Jordel Fresh Breeze. Um, yeah, that's it. If you want to go yeah. on the more expensive end, you can also get Griff and Zug, I think. Ooh, Zug. I oh, love me some Zug. Like, they, so, they have a good inducement game. So you uh, want to keep that TV low. At least starting off. Eventually, you hit a point in development where you do want to buy more knights. But you don't want them all right away. 
Uh, a better comparison is Kislev, actually, where you also don't want all of your good players right away. You want to develop some and then buy more as your TV increases. I, I personally don't hate having four blitzers early. Uh, I like, I do the three start build, but then mm. after I get my Apo, I get that fourth one as soon as possible. I did, AV say, I did say that I was in the minority in that opinion. Yeah. So, uh, AV8's mm -hmm. not that strong. <laughs> so, and your your blockers are going to be mm -hmm. hitting, hitting the dirt a lot, if not wrestle getting knocked over because they don't have mm -hmm. dodge yet. Or if you level them up, one of them's going to be piling mm -hmm. on, so he's going to be on the ground yeah. too. Uh, so, Actually, I don't love piling on on the the uh human i do uh, on one of them yes i do i love it a lot okay well that's fair um but yeah like probably you're saving up for your third reroll then you want to like you're not doing anything until you have at least 13 players on this team i honestly uh, don't know if he needs a third reroll yet i would i would probably get two uh peasants here so you have a bench one you can foul with uh you, when you have wrestle and block on pretty much everybody you're going to be throwing blocks with you're mm. not going to be throwing a whole lot of rerolls except for when you're trying to pick up the ball and after that first pickup you've got mm. catch as a reroll to hand off to somebody actually that's a good point and not only that but on a four night uh bretonian team one of these these knights absolutely should take leader on their first or second level up yeah, if you get leader uh, that on is one. objectively the correct choice here because they Brett's have expensive rerolls. You're saving yourself fifty k in team value if you do that uh, for something that you can easily make room for, and it also gets you to your peasants that to your peasant saturation that much faster. Because like I said, you want a minimum of thirteen players on a Bretonian team. I think yep. probably more with the four night build. Yeah, because your your mm -hmm. peasants are gonna start dropping. Uh, you're only gonna have three of them, and they're all gonna be on the line. So every time that you're on defense after you score, so they're gonna get mm -hmm. hit. Incidentally, um, that's another nice thing about having only two knights. You can afford to have fewer uh, yeomen because you can usually induce players. Fewer yeomen. You can afford to have fewer players on your team because you can usually induce players. So, uh, it, it it pads the amount of peasants you have. So even if you're on loner uh, peasants, you still have a bench. Yep. Usually. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that is my very specific opinion about uh, Bretts. But you know what? You have two wins, so you might do pretty well. It sounds like you know what you're doing. No. So. Uh, Don't listen to us. We don't. <laughs> I mean, it's too late to listen to me. You've already made the team. Uh, so, who do you think is going to win? Uh, this one is definitely baseless and too hard to tell. But if I had to guess purely on the builds that we've seen, I'm going to go with elves behaving badly because I love me some dark elves. Uh, I'm going to go with that Bretonia team that I was literally just looking at. Hierarchy? Yeah. I thought you were going to go with one of the undead teams, but... All right. Uh, no. I think both of the undead teams have performed very well. Uh, and maybe I'll change my vote to one of them at the half season. But tr I don't think that they will get first place right now. Yeah. Mind you, I'm not so sure... I'm not sure... I mean, look, this is, this is baseless speculation. I... I can, pick, I can pick who I want, okay? I don't need to no. justify myself. That's fine. You, you do you. Actually, though, I th there is one th other thing I want to mention now that I'm taking one more quick look at the team. Uh, the very first team we looked at in this division, Common Nightmares, their TV is way higher than everyone else. Yeah, they uh, bought that wolf mm -hmm. and got a Pokemon. So yeah. that I don't... added 180 or 160. With their development, I don't think that's an, an advantage to them. Uh, yeah, I if, would I would drop something. I I At feel, least one zombie. Because mm -hmm. like normally I would see high higher TV necro. Oh well, yeah, they're gonna wreck face. But 
But the TV is not where it needs to be for them to wreck face. The wolves yep. are rookies. So if the if one of those werewolves was like level 3, I would totally go with the work, the necro team. Yeah. But who knows, maybe they'll start leveling up quick. Mhm. We'll have to see. There's a lot of games left to be played. Okay, so uh, that was this. And, uh, you know, an hour and a half-ish. <coughs> I think we're done. Yeah, Any we're closing good. words? <laughs> uh, have fun. Okay, sounds good to me. Good luck with all your, all your games. We will, we will be doing a weekly recap. Weekly, as the name implies. Uh, huge, we're going to be aiming for the middle of the week, but sometimes we might be pushing it towards the weekend, depending how busy the two of us are. Uh, so just so you know, and, uh, also one last thing before we leave, then I'm really done. We should have done something we forgot to do at the start is state our qualifications. <laughs> oh, we have to do that. I'm well, not we, qualified well for anything. we should, right? Okay. So I, my name is Dwigs. Uh, I've been playing in REL for about three seasons now. Uh, I'm playing REL 8 with uh, the Rock and Sockums. We are a Dark Elf team, and we like to punch people in the face. Hey, so I'm on my... I'm Chaos Blue. I'm on my fourth season of Rebel, and I played Blood Bowl for about a year before then. Uh, I am a former Div 1 coach in REL uh, because I played really badly last season. <laughs> Hence the former. Uh, I've also played in a number of the side leagues, like Clan and All Stars. Uh, oh yeah, I'm playing Dwarves in Rel. I'm playing when I was in All Stars. I played Bretts when I was. No, I'm getting my teams mixed up. Okay, I've played a lot of different teams and I've played in a lot of different competitions. That's all. And n none of those teams I've played have been uh, agility teams. At least not the way I've played them. <laughs> and that's about all you need to know. I'm a bit, also, I'm a big fan of Stunty, but I don't think that's going to come up much in these divisions. Okay, I think we're done for real this time. So, uh, yeah. thanks for joining us, and I hope it was good for you. <clears throat> and good luck with your games, everyone who's watching. But not to the people who aren't watching, they don't deserve our luck. Uh, bye! Good night, everybody.